Hi everyone, and today we are doing a review on the new M5 stack Paper S3. The Paper S3 is a new version of the M5 Paper development board. The name clearly hints at the e-ink display technology, which is used in low-power devices and is designed for user interaction while reducing eye strain. These displays are most commonly found in e-readers and electronic shelf labels in stores. The main advantages include low power consumption and reduced eye strain, and the disadvantage low refresh rate and limited color reproduction, in this case only grayscale. Back to the device. The e-ink display here is a 4.7 inch capacitive touch screen with a resolution of 540 to 960 pixels. The touch panel is powered by the JT911 capacitive sensor which supports two-point multi-touch and various gestures. At the heart of the board is the ESP32 S3R8 microcontroller with 8 MB of PSRAM and 16 MB of flash memory. There is a built-in real-time clock module, the BM8563. The 1800 mAh battery, combined with the processor's low power consumption and deep sleep mode, can provide over two weeks of operation on a single charge. Of course, this depends on the task being performed and connected peripherals. If you need to determine the device orientation, there is a BMI 270 module, an inertial sensor that includes both an accelerometer and a gyroscope. It's suitable for variables, smartphones, sports gadgets and motion stabilization control systems. On the side of the device, there are micro SD card slot. It's recommended to use cards up to 16 GB. On the opposite side, there is a single button. It's used for power, reset, and entering boot mode. If your computer doesn't detect the paper S3, just hold the button while plugging in the cable. The device should be recognized without any issues. For audio notifications, the device includes a built-in buzzer. At first glance, it may seem like the Type-C port is only way to connect external peripherals. But if you take a closer look at the back panel under the sticker, you will find the two hidden cutouts. To access them, you will need to cut along the provided template. Once opened, you gain access to the battery power connector and an HC1.25 port. I didn't have the matching connector, so we will test sensor connectivity as soon as the cable arrives. Also hidden under the sticker are two neodymium magnets, which let the paper S3 stick nicely to metal surfaces. For example, I put it on my fridge. On the back panel there are two screws. I initially thought unscrewing them would let me remove the board and display from the case. However, the front glass is glued in place, and I decided not to force it out, since I still need to make a few videos with practical examples of using the paper S3 so it's too early to break it. To make sure you don't miss anything, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. If you are interested in purchase Paper S3, please use the link in the description. Let us know in the comments what you think could be done with the board like this. Any ideas are welcome. The device arrived in very nice box with a convenient pull tab for easy unboxing. Out of the box, the board comes with a demo firmware that showcases the built-in modules. You can test the buzzer, check the accelerometer, see the real-time clock in action, scan for Wi-Fi networks, and test the micro SD card. What about other ready-to-use firmware? Well, there really aren't any yet. Just kidding. Though, as they say, they're a grain of true in every joke. In this case, more than just a grain. Since the device is brand new, the M5 Burner App Store has almost no compatible firmware. In the M5 burner, left-hand menu, when we select paper, only the firmware with the paper S3 in the name will work. As you can see, there are only a handful. Firmware that worked on the older M5 paper won't work here due to differences in the ESP32 chip versions. For example, I immediately wanted to install an EPUB reader on my paper S3, but of course it didn't run. Thankfully, the reader project is open source, so I think I'll be able to port it soon. Device is the perfect for a reader, 
and I've always dreamed of a reader this size. So far now, I think the average user might find it difficult to interact with the Paper S3, but the board itself has a huge potential. To create your own app, you can use the graphical development environment UIFlow 2. First, you need to install the UIFlow 2 application on the board via M5 burner. To write code in Arduino IDE, you need to correctly configure the compilation settings. In the board menu, select ESP32 S3 Dev module. In the Tools tab, set USB CDC on boot enabled, so you can see serial messages. Set the flash size to 16 MB and set PSRAM OPI PSRAM. You also need to install the M5 Unified library and download the EPDIY library from GitHub. It's needed to control the display since the ESP32 S3 drives the e-ink display panel directly without the separate driver. For those coding with Platform.io, when creating a new project, in board menu select ESP32 S3 DevKit M1 and add the provided configuration to the Platform.io ini file. I'll leave it in the description. So what are my plans with this board? I've started working on firmware that fetches headlines from a free news API and refreshes them on the screen every hour, kind of like a real-time e-paper newspaper. When I finish, I'll make a tutorial how to build this kind of application. We'll also soon start covering smart home topics and home assistant. And I want to use this as a dashboard or control panel. That's it for now, this was Arthur from the Hobby Support channel, the next video is coming very soon, see you again!